ironic that this tiny, unfinished structure, perched atop a small knoll, would be the main dwelling for a property that measures close to 100 acres. Even more surprising, the fact that the owner and tenant is 100 years old and lives alone. But that's the way that John likes it. Simple and free to live as he pleases, with the peace and serenity to look back at a life that has seen and experienced so much. Well, Mr. Trambo. Yes, sir. Johnny, it's, it's real nice to be here with you today. I mean, we, we have to talk because I know your birthday is coming up. You're going to be making uh, 100 years mm -hmm. old in, in uh, April. And, and your birthday is when? Uh, the 17th of April. And you were born in 19... 1916. So you were born 1916, mm -hmm. April 17th. Yeah. And uh, I, I think it's very important for us to talk because since you have so much experience and knowledge, uh, I thought it would be a good idea for us to have a, a chat on, and to record it. And so I'd like you to uh, give us some description of your early life. Like, where were you born? I was born in, in, in Mount Washington, the state of Mount Washington. The state of Mount Washington is on the west end. On the west end of my father's estate, which he bought in 1902. Your, your father bought the estate in 1902? 1902. Mount Washington? Yes. And that estate uh, is located just on, along uh, west of the, us west, the western end of the island? Yes. Okay. Uh, when your father bought the estate, was he uh, the owner of other estates also? Or? No, he bought Mount Washington. Uh, it was the first one he bought okay. in 1902. That was his first estate? Yes, and he bought Nicholas here in 1909. Okay, and then he bought Nicholas next. That's where we are now. That's right. Okay. And he, then he bought uh, Estate Montpelier in 1924. Estate Montpelier? Yeah, and he turned that over to his sister, Mrs. Julia Feck. Okay. Yeah. So your father, what was his his name? Loritz Tramburg. Loritz yeah. Tramburg. And and he was born where? He was born, uh, I think, in Upper Concordia. On St. Croix? Yeah. yeah, he was born on the island of St. Croix. His father was Dean, and he, he's also Dean, mm -hmm. but uh, his father uh, came, they came here in the early uh, 18th century. I don't know what time they came here. Okay, but so his father came here, but your 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 grandfather came here from Denmark. Yeah. But he, your father was born here. Born here on the island. Right, and and so his name was Hans Hans Jakob. Your father, your grandfather. My grandfather was Hans Jakob. Yeah. And so your father was a white man. Yes. Okay. What about your mother? My mother was a native, born in State Punch. Okay. And she was a black woman. Okay, so your mother was a black woman? Regina Percival Trumbull. Okay. And was your mother and father close in age to each other? Mm, no, he was uh, a good many years older than her, you know. Okay. I think from what I learned, her mother used to work, work for him on this very estate. Oh, so your, your grandmother worked for your father, you believe? Y yes. Okay, on, yeah. on this estate? Yeah. Okay. But all of us, mm -hmm. the children, was born in the state of Mount Washington. Okay. But your, your grandmother actually worked on Nicholas? Yes. And then your father met your mother through having his, his uh, her mother working for, on his estate? That's right. Okay. So, you remember about how old your mother was when, uh, when you were born? Or do you know how... No, I haven't figured it, but... Uh, how, how many children died, did she have? She, seven. seven. And who was the em, oldest? Emil, Emil was the oldest. He died. Okay. Emil, then Olivia, Lawrence's mother, uh -huh. and then me, then Otto. Uh -huh. And the, after Otto was Ingeborg, Aina, and Annie. So... Okay, so that's the seven children your mother had? Yeah. And all for the same father? Yes. And what about your father? How, how many children did he have? Well, he, he was married to a Henderson, you know. Before your mother? Yeah, before my mother, uh -huh. uh, Miss Agatha Hen Henderson. Was she white or black? Uh, 
she, uh, she was brown skin. Oh, so she was mixed. Yeah, but mm. Mr. Henderson was the uh, something like a chief in the uh, D in Danish time mm. before the transfer, of course. Okay, okay. So your father had some other children other than the seven. Yes, yeah, with uh, your mother. Yeah, Georgie, and then uh, Jenny, your Jenny Ford, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Senator Ford. Senator Ford in St. Thomas? In, yeah, his grandmother uh, yeah. is my sister. His Jenny. grandmother is your sister? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jenny Ford mm -hmm. and Rose De Shinnery. Mm -hmm. uh, she was married to David Shinnery. Okay. Now let's talk about your, your childhood because I know you were born at Mount Washington. Yes. Where did you, do you remember when you first went to school, where you went to school? Old Dane School in town. That's the Old Dane School in Fredericksted Town? That's right in Queen Street. Okay. And you were living at Mount Washington at the time? Yes. So how did you go from Mount Washington to school? How did you go to school? Well, we had two milk cart. Uh, one milk cart used to go from here and we used to carry milk from town. So we uh, dri driving a milk cart. Okay, so you used, to, you used to take milk to town like that was part of your, your father's business? Yes. You used to sell milk to the town? All the farmers, more, more or less, used to sell milk. Okay. Butcher animals and stuff. So you had a... A, ba a ba bottle, of, a half bottle of milk was six cents. Okay. And a whole bottle was eight cents, uh -huh. you know. Okay. I remember giving out milk before I go to school. So you would deliver milk and in the milk cart, and that same milk cart was your transportation to get to school. Yeah, I was, in those days, most of the people walked. The oh. Children walked from Nicholas Spring Garden all the way to town. To town, yeah. Oh, okay. And people used to walk. There was no transportation. Uh, the Christians said you walk from Fredericksted to Christiansted mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Okay. You, you went to school at 12, 12 o'clock, you, you either had some family, a cousin or okay, for friend of the family in town that you'd eat to, you know. Okay. But you could have feed a, a child for five cents. Back then you could... Back then. Yeah. You know. So you'd get lunch from a family friend yes. or, or relative? Yes. Yeah. Miss uh, Elv Elvina Thomas, Linus Thomas' mother, uh -huh. was cousin to my mother. Mm -hmm. So that's what we used to eat. That's what you ate? Yeah. Now the school that you went to, uh, was it mostly for the native black children or mostly yes. for the white children? No, it was for the black children. That was the public school, the school was public school. So you went to the school for the black children? Absolutely. Where did the white children go to school? Uh, as far as I know, uh, there's a, a, a teacher that used to teach here. Uh, uh, Miss Mina, she was black. She was a black teacher, but she used yeah, to teach white children? Yeah, Miss Mina. Okay. And in they went to her house? Or in, went? in a joint. They, had, they went to her, 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 her house in town, you know. Okay. Just, just a few. Just, there were just a few of them. So yeah. they went to a house in town and they were taught by this lady That's who was right. actually a black lady yeah. teaching the white children separate from the black children. That's right. Okay. And so, mm -hmm. and in the, when we went to school, you had to behave yourself. Right. That right. is missing. <laughs> I remember those days. Okay. <laughs> they would hold you and cut, cut your pants. <laughs> if you messed up. <laughs> yeah. But then, let's, let's talk about when you got a little older now. Yeah. You, you, you got older, you, uh, you went to school. Do you, you remember how old you were when you finished school? I was... Uh, about 16. About 16. You know, Chief yes. Smith? You have heard about Chief Smith? No. Frank Smith. No, I don't. He I was don't. a man that he fought in World War II. Okay. Native of this island. Uh -huh. And Miss Mali Shabot was his wife. He came back and he married to Miss Mali Shabot. So you mean he fought in World War I or World War II? World War I. World War I, that's yeah. what I Yeah. Yeah, okay. he sailed. I remember seeing mm -hmm. a, big, a big picture of him in World War I. You know. Okay. And he, when I got to sixth grade, mm -hmm. uh, he got a job for me with the Western Ocean boat that Arnold Gorn, Mr. Arnold Gorn, he was, you know, Marvin had the furnace with his boat. And okay. Arnold Gorn was Western Ocean. Okay. I was to go sailing on a boat called the Munamar. Mm -hmm. 
the Munamar? Yeah. And they, and he wanted you to walk on that boat? Yeah, I was to go sailing on that boat. And my, and my father threw a monkey wrench in the whole thing. <laughs> so he said he had to walk here. To, for, for he me. had to walk in, He had enough estates for you to keep you busy? That, that's right. Okay, yeah. so you couldn't go sailing. And I, I remember the first aeroplane landed here in Prosperity Pasture. Oh, yeah? Yes, yeah, Santa Maria. I think I was in the first or second grade. She came right down from the head of town, right, right down in the short street, mm -hmm. and went straight across the island. Mm -hmm. She didn't land then. She land, came back and landed the second time she came. Okay. A two-motor plane. Okay. Right on Prosperity Pasture there. So when you uh, when you finished school, what was your first job that you that you did? I we I didn't go to work. Emil went to work in the grain sugar factory. Okay. But we stood home. We had so much of work. Yeah, so, so you stayed at the estate. You worked at the estate. estate. Okay. But okay. your older brother, he was working in the uh, la grain sugar, sugar factory. factory yeah. Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot of work here to do, uh, mm -hmm. and the estate, you know. Right. Yeah. And so, when was your first job outside of your father's estate? Oh, I worked with Sam Piva as a uh, weatherman. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that was... Yeah. Uh, Piva? Yeah. As a weatherman? Yeah, Sam Piva. Yeah. So tell me what you did as a weatherman. Uh, we used to uh, plant uh, clouds and things. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And so you would absorb the clouds? Yeah, I know. Oh, I know everything up there. You know all the different types of clouds? Yes. Okay. You have uh, cumulus, out of cumulus. Okay. Short cumulus, and and you could tell when you look at them, you could tell that's uh, right, which, the direction which of the clouds, and, and and that's you would report that. Yes. And then that would form the weather report. Weather re report. Okay. Yeah. And do you know if he was working for the government or? He came here working for the government. Okay, yeah. the United States government. Yes, Sam Pivar. Sam Pivar, and yeah. you work with him. Yes. Wow, that must have been an interesting experience. That's right. Yes. Okay, so you work with him, and then uh, do you remember the next job you worked after that? I I I, I didn't work. I went from from him. Uh, I went in the army. So you went into the United States Army. Yeah. What year was that? That was uh, 1944. 1944. So yeah. that was right coming to the end of World War Two. Yeah. So tell us about your uh, army experience. Well, it was very good. I did th the things that a soldier would have done. <laughs> Go in town, you drink a lot of liquor, and had a good time. Where, where, what, where were you uh, stationed? Uh, Buchanan uh, in Puerto Rico. That was your first. That was your first place. First place was Fort Buchanan in, San, in Puerto Rico. Yes, that's close to San Juan, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So you uh, you were in Puerto Rico. Uh, when you first enlisted, and that was your basic training? Yeah. That's where you got basic training? Yes, and we went from there to New Orleans. New Orleans? Camp Pochette, Louisiana. Louisiana. Yes. Okay. You know. And tell us about what happened in New Orleans. I, well, the same thing. I went to town free <laughs> and had a lot of fun. Okay. Sometime we had a fight, uh, Some a fighting. fight here and there because you know, in those days they had this uh, segregation business. Had segregation in, in Louisiana then? In, yes. During the first half of the 20th century, Jim Crow laws enforced racial segregation in the southern United States. In the South, white-only signs in public facilities were a typical sight. But for the soldiers from the Virgin Islands, not only was it unfamiliar, but also unacceptable. John said he and other VI soldiers would toss the signs out of buses through the windows. Okay, and well, tell me about that, how that, how that experience was. Well, we are, uh, they learned to leave us alone because we learned to walk, walk one and two. Very seldom you find one or two people. We find us in groups of five and six. So you all learned not to walk alone? Yes. Okay, and that was, so now when you are in Fort Buchanan, that, that uh, what was it, a company, they call the group? That, no, that was a camp. Uh, a camp, camp I know Fort Buchanan. Buchanan, Camp Buchanan, but I mean the, the platoon or company that you were with yes. uh, was from Virgin Islanders or Virgin did they Island, include Puerto Rican? Virgin Islanders, uh, they had Puerto Rican uh, troop, troop, 
Poor, Se separate Puerto Rican company, but but a but separate company. But had two company. Wo two Virgin Island company, uh, mm -hmm. the eight seventy second, which I w I was in, mm -hmm. and the eight uh, eight seventy uh, the, the eight one. No, that wasn't the eight seventy. We were in the eight seventy second. That's that's where we had that big uh, revolt. You all had a revolt. Yeah, you know you had to ride in the back of the bus and all. Okay. Those. So this was in Louisiana? In Louisiana. But tell me about Camp, the revolt you had. Camp Pluché, Louisiana. Pluché? Pluché. Pluché. Yeah. John's first sergeant at the time was demoted and replaced for his alleged failure to discipline one of his black soldiers for whistling at a white woman. And what was the reason for the revolt? Because we didn't want uh, Captain Marx, another, another company. Mm -hmm. uh, he was from another company mm -hmm. to take over our company. So you didn't like the leadership change? No. And so you are revolted? Yeah. yeah. But that's that's very serious in the army. I mean, you could get put in jail for that. N no, they shipped us out the very night. I remember that. They brought they, they out... Put you on, they put you on a... Uh, they brought out uh, some National Guard, two truckloads of nat National Guard with... Uh, Bayonet, live, live ammunition, with, with live ammunition and bayonet bayonets. fix, okay. and they locked down all of our, our uh, rifle in the rack and stuff like locked that. Locked down your weapons? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And about one, we went to the mess hall and eat, and about one o'clock the night, mm -hmm. we board the train, one of these slow trains, mm -hmm. uh, on to British Columbia. In Canada? In Canada. Okay. Yeah. And it was from there we went overseas to the Hawaiian Islands. So you you went to British Columbia by train? By train, yeah. And then they put you on a ship yeah. to Hawaii? That was slow. Those trains were slow. It took about four days with all the changes and stuff like right, that. Right, to get, to get up to British Columbia? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, at this time, the Japanese were still very uh, strong in the in the South Pacific, so they I suppose had, you were supposed to be going to the South Pacific yes, to fight. They had dropped the bomb, already dropped the bomb on Japan. The uh, uh, United States had already dropped the bomb on Japan. By the time you got to Hawaii? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we was in Sun Island, Hawaii. The commanding officer in the mid Pacific Pearl Harbor. Yeah. He was a uh, he was a Puerto Rican. A Puerto Rican, okay. Yeah. They have a place there by the name of Kalihi Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, Puerto Ricans went in nineteen fourteen from Puerto Rico to the Philippines and to the Hawaiian Islands to cut sugar cane, you know. Okay. Yeah. And in Kalihi Valley you know, when we got there, we met the same uh, the families. We had a little freak or cat and thing, and I was anxious to know <laughs> oh, yeah? how things was back in Puerto Rico and stuff. stuff okay, like so you that. met people who who were actually descendants of, of Puerto yeah. Ricans. Uh, 1914. They, you met them in, in Hawaii or you met them in the Philippines? In, in Hawaii. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and so they had a little area that they lived separate? Or? Uh, they, it's a long street. Kalihi Valley okay. was a, it's a long street. A street, and, yeah. Right. So how long did you stay in the army? Uh, I came out, uh, I, I served four years. You know. Four years? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you came out, the war was over? The war was over. And did you go to live in the States or did you come no, back? No, I came to, right to back home. Oh, you came straight I back I was the, the only way. one came back home and took over where I left off. Mm -hmm. Okay, but your friends, the other guys who were in the army with you, most of them did what? Well, a lot of them came back, okay. uh, but uh, I mean, my, my brother, mm -hmm. he stood in the, in the States, Otto didn't come back either. So your brother, Emil, and your brother, Otto, they didn't come home, they so you were the only come, brother I was the only one that came home, came home took to, over. to help your father. Yeah, I guess that's the reason why we're here today. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> your, father, your father at that time was getting older, but... Uh, do you remember what year your father died? Uh, September 18, 1972. Your father died in 1972? Mm -hmm. So he I, died at a very old age. Yeah, I don't remember what his, what year he was born. You know. Okay, but how old, do you remember how old he was when he died about? He was uh, 96. So he was 96? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so if he was if he died in in uh, seventy two, he was born somewhere around the, in the seventies. Yes. Eighteen uh, seventies. Early eighteenth century. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There may be some discrepancies with the age of Laurich Tramberg at the time of his death. If we were to reference the 1911 census record, Lawrence, 43 at the time, would have been about 105 when he died. Furthermore, a U.S. census taken in 1918 lists Lawrence at 50 years old, confirming the age on the Danish census. Nonetheless, according to some private ancestry records, Lawrence's date of birth to death is 1867 to 1962, which would have made him 95 close to what John remembers. That's interesting. So your father was a, was a young man in the, a uh, young boy during yeah. the fire burn. And so your, your family, like yourself, have the ability to live very long. Yes. yes. That's great. And I know you have a brother still alive also, your brother Otto. Otto, yes. He's the only brother you have alive, right? Yes, he's only the two of us. Only the two siblings, you, the, yeah. just you and him Probably remaining? Right no. Okay. Now tell me a little bit about your work because you know I'm public works commissioner, so uh -huh. we have to talk a little bit about construction of roads and all that. I know you did. Well, some of that. it started in uh, 1929 to pave road here. Oh yeah. Yeah, 1929. Before all all the streets and everything was dirt. They used to gravel. They used to gravel it. Gravel them and mm -hmm. spread it in. in spread it over the, the potholes and stuff like that. Right. So yeah. I know they had uh, they had uh, gravel and they I know that they used to build uh the people build dug, a pretty good base on yes, the road. They dug the uh, uh most of the estate had a gravel pit where the people dig it and they put it in her son cart and No how you find a gravel pit? What what a gravel pit look like? Well it was just a place uh, that have not blue big stone. Okay, the brown. This what red stone. stone red. Where okay. you could have dig it out and put it in a shovel it up, put it in a cart, and. You know, it. if you were to look for, if you had to look for a gravel pit, you think you could find one? Uh, right down in Mount Washington Road, mm -hmm. where those big time and trees. Yeah. That's the gravel pit where we used to dig. dig okay, gravel and so you just dig up gravel, and that's uh, what you use. Yeah, and put it in a mule cart, and. Okay. Uh, Go on, whether in the street or the country road, mm -hmm. you just put it in the So hole. they didn't have any crushers? No, they didn't. Oh, no. Crusher, mm -hmm. The first crusher was open in uh, 1929. That cr the crusher is behind to me. The crusher that's on your property? Yes. By Creaky Dam? Yes, that was the first crusher. That's the first crusher on St. Croix? On St. Croix in the three Virgin Islands. The first in the Virgin Islands? Yes. Wow. They, they used to take stone from from over here mm. and take to St. Thomas and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about Creaky Dam? When did they build Creaky Dam? Uh, that piece of land was sold to the government in 1903. Mm -hmm. and so Creaky Dam was built before the crusher? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the reservoir was sold in 1903. Mm. To that to, to the government? Yeah, we were supposed to have a naval base here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the one they built in Puerto Rico. Okay. But uh, the, the, that was the first crush in the tree Virgin Islands. Wow. And so, in terms of... 1929, uh, Mackenzie and Paratishi. Was the name of the company? No. Uh, that was the... Go they were working over public works. Okay. They, and so... When when they started paving roads, uh, do you know if it was a, it was public works workers or it was uh, contractors? It was public works. The government it was gov government workers. Government workers paving yeah. the roads. Yes. Okay. And so did did you work with the government at any time or? No, I I, I didn't. The only I, it's when I I went to work in, in World War Two. Mm -hmm. When they started bringing in the, the, uh, the planes with these uh, 200, 2,000 pound bombs and things, mm -hmm. I was a guard there. That so was before you joined the army? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. But then when, um, I know you work with, with we work with uh, AC, did you work with Sanford? AC Sanford. I mm -hmm. work with AC Sanford. I work with Meridian Engineering. Okay. When you work with AC Sanford, do you remember about what year that was? Uh, 
sixties or the fifties? In the late late fifties. Late fifties. Yeah. Okay. And so AC Sanford, I, I remember them when I was a child. Uh -huh. And AC Sanford used to build roads. I did. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That was a contractor that came in in the fifties. Yes. Okay. Now did um, did they hire you as a laborer or an operator or what did you? do? I went on there as an operator. What kind of operator? I used to run a, a grader. A grader. And then I started running bulldozers and all those things. Okay. Um, uh, I was a wrong man with uh, mm -hmm. heavy equipment. So you you built roads mostly where? I all over the island. Mm. Uh, at that time, you had uh, you know Copley Bay windmill. Yeah. That's as far up as uh, roads used to be. So we didn't have any road to Kramers Park or mm. to or to Point Uda. Mm, definitely not. Okay, and so when you went up to... Uh, I walked on all those roads. So you walked on the roads going to the east yes. from Coakley Bay? Yes. Okay. And that uh, was AC Sanford, you were working for them? Uh, Meridian Engineering. You're working with Meridian. With Joe Pitts. I found Joe it. Pitts was there. Oh, okay, I know that name. And uh, mm -hmm. Bill Legend. So Joe Pitts was around here for a long time? Then. Yes. But I know his name. I know that and name. And Bill Legend, he was the first one with Meridian Engineering. And Meridian was here for a very long yes. time because I remember Meridian even when yes. I... Yes, uh, that's the first company Bill. came in. Okay. You know. And so these this road building, uh, tell me about it. Did they uh, do a lot of heavy base? Like build yes, they had, base? they had uh, had graders to grade the road mm -hmm. and uh, bulldozers, rippers, you know. Right. And it level the whole thing and roll it down. Roll it down with yeah. a big roller? Yeah. You had the big rollers or? Big, uh, big roller, heavy rollers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then when you were working in, uh, in, in this construction, uh, did you work in any other island or? I worked, uh, in St. Thomas, Puerto Rico. I worked in Trinidad. Oh yeah? Yeah. For the same company? Yeah. I, I, I built road. All in Trinidad. I think I was telling you about mm. the Red House. You told me that about Trinidad, about the the records. You yeah. all the records in one yeah. house. But I didn't it, know you were building roads down there. Yeah, that's what we went there to do. Okay. Yeah, building roads. All right. Yeah. All right. And so you spent a, a lot of years with uh, with these construction companies. Yeah, I worked quite a, quite a few years with, okay. with them. Tell me a little bit about um, because we have a project which we are trying to restore some of the. Uh, the historic properties uh -huh. in the Virgin Islands, the buildings. Uh -huh. And I wanted to ask you if you remembered some of these older buildings. I know you went to the Dane School. So yep. That one has already been restored. Yeah. Uh -huh. That The barracks yard, you, you remember the barracks yard? I remember it very well. Uh -huh. yeah. And what, what was it used for when you, in your memory? The Marines was, was there when I was a child. Okay, which Marines? The United States Marines? You know, yeah, that's same John Gray and mm -hmm. Mr. Piggott and all of them. Right. That's where they was. In the, in the barracks yard in Christian State? Yes. And they had a, a group of Marines there, a lot of Marines there, or just a handful? Well, I couldn't tell you how much, but right. we used to see them driving around mm. and walking. Uh, and they would, they, they would never, you never see groups that are, I couldn't tell you how, how much. Right, but you just saw them in, in small numbers. Yes. Okay, did that building, uh, do you remember if they had uh, uh, the building in the front, if that building was in use or just the barracks to the back? It was in use. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, one time it was public works, yeah, too. Right, you know? right. That's okay. where I start working heavy equipment. Oh, yeah? I remember when I was coming out. Uh, I couldn't start the, the grader. Mm -hmm. I, I just went and tell them I could run a grader. <laughs> and the, one of the mechanics come and, and tell me, man, you know this, this thing hard to start, let me start it for you. Mm -hmm. And he started it up and I jump in the damn thing mm -hmm. and, and drive off with it. But you never, that was your first time driving the First a time, I never been <laughs> in one, uh, all I did, I started yeah. on the road. But you told her you could operate? Yeah. Okay. And here's a little trick to turn a corner with a grader, you know, have a party. You push the one lever and the wheel will lean okay. and you could come wrong. Okay. But I didn't know, so I was trying to get out of the yard, not knowing that and backing up 
backing up and going far to get out, get out of the yard. <laughs> and finally, a fellow showed me the, uh, num number three lever. Uh -huh. You push them on the wheel with a lean. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess you have feet. I've seen, I've seen the graders yeah. run. I've never but, driven. But if you run a grader with a wheel erect, you, you, you can't, can't turn. No. You yeah, it made to go straight. It yeah. made to go straight. Yeah. That, that curve thing and uh, uh -huh. it'll, it'll turn the wheel right around. You know. Okay, so you, you learn how to ride a grader yeah. to run a grader. And that all, all the roads in Hess. Mm -hmm. I, I clean that land with bulldozer. In Hess? Yes, in Hess. When, uh, okay. Uh, Ralph Shabot sold it. Sold it to, to Leon, Leon Hess. Hess. Yes. Well, I, I, I run machinery there. Okay. I never worked for the refinery, mm -hmm. but we worked. Uh, Leon Hess, he was a very nice man. He had a, a mess hall on the hill. Mm -hmm. He used to come up down and eat with us, talk, talk to you, very, very friendly and stuff. Like okay. That, you know? When you all were walking, he would sit down with the workers yes. and, and mm -hmm. talk and eat and everything. Yeah. That's good. I remember when President Roosevelt and Miss Roosevelt came to St. Croix. Okay. Yeah. And they they were here, but he was no longer president at the time, right? He was already no. out of office. No, he was president then. He came here. You know who drove it? Drove uh, Aki Fleming, Alexander Fleming. Uh -huh. he, if you ever heard of, about Donald Williams, the talk, he used to say he had the president car, mm -hmm. a, a Packard. It was okay, a pack well, of, yeah. yeah. And he drove uh, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Roosevelt around. Okay. In, in terms of your experiences in, in St. Croix and, and your experiences abroad, I noticed you always came right back to St. Croix. Yes, I just lo love St. Croix. I, didn't, I was in New York. When I came back from overseas, mm -hmm. my wife Cynthia, mm -hmm. she had the children, you know. Yeah, you had a wife. Uh, what year was that around when you were married? I married. Uh, I married. No, I married her in the army. When you were in the yeah, army, she in had the had the children okay. before before I went in. Okay, so you had children. You you have how many children do you have? Four of them. Okay, but uh, the girl and the boy. He, uh, they died of muscular dystrophy. Two of them died of muscular dystrophy? Uh, yeah, I have one now John, named John like me. Uh -huh. I'm hoping that he would come down and take over because I'm not going... I met one of your sons, his name is Carl. That, like that. that was Carl. Okay. That's the one that told me, he wanted to sign the property over to him now. Right, right. And but he's not the oldest? No, he was, he he's my youngest son. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I met him. I remember yeah, he him. wanted me to sign my rights after the property mm -hmm. for him, you know. Right, right. And then maybe he and his wife would sell the whole thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. And speaking about selling, I know you don't like to sell off your properties. No, especially. I don't think we should. Okay, you think that the native people should hold on? We to that? have sold too much of these islands. Okay. I okay. mean, it's the biggest mistake. Mm -hmm. Remember, you, you can't buy them now. Right, the prices are too high for when us. When I was uh, fixing a road in St. You see the, what they call the Enid Pan or something? Enid Pan in St. John, yes. Yeah. I know the place. That's well, where they have the yard. Uh, that's where we bring in the barges now. Yeah, well, how much an acre you think land was then? How much was it? You tell, make a guess. Well, I know land was cheap back then. And, $50. $50 for an acre of land. $50 for an acre of land. Mm -hmm. That is a million dollars. It's a no. million dollars for an acre land in yeah. St. John, that's correct. Uh, a run up here is from thirty five to forty thousand. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't get land away around mm -hmm. yeah, under thirty, thirty five thousand. That's true. Yeah. Now so you your father had uh three or four estates. Yeah. How many of them does your family still control? Uh well Montpelier is gone. Okay. All where, where the crusher is. Uh -huh. That's crusher is on Montpelier land, right? Oh. By Miss Brannion House, uh -huh. that began to grow. Oh, you're talking about Springfield Crusher now? Springfield Crusher. That's not the same Crusher we were talking about before because the no. Crusher that we have here by. It's by in, the, Cricky, in Cricky Dam. Right, by Cricky yeah. Dam, right. Mm -hmm. But the Crusher you're talking about, the one by Grove Place, it, was also uh, by your, in your family's property? That's right, you. Okay. It belonged to Montpelier. Okay. So, which estates do you still have now in, in the uh, Tramborg family? We have Mount Washington and. Uh, you still own Mount Washington? Yeah, Lawrence. Owns, owns some of them, and, and Swen Emil's son. And um, 
And so you own Mount Washington and, and, and Nicholas here. And Nicholas is here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are in 25 Nicholas right now. This, okay. And the, by the uh, old crusher is where? The old, down the road? By the crusher, by the Cookie Dam. What, what's that? That is, uh, f 14 AB Nath Hall. That's Nath Hall, okay. Yeah. Alright. And, uh, 15 B Nath Hall and stuff. So. Right. And then you have a nephew live over this way, right? That's Raphael. Raphael. Yeah, okay. that's my youngest sister's son. Okay. And she died. And that, that estate is where, where he is? That's Bonds Hill. Bonds Hill. So you yeah. all own Bonds Hill also? Bo yes. Okay. It, 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 was, they had a whole thing under the name of Nicholas. Oh, it was all named Nicholas then? Yes. Okay. It, it, nobody spoke about it, uh, right. Bonds Hill. And, they didn't call anything Bonds Hill back no. then? Now, this I know a, there's a mill right here. Is, that, you, you can remember, you know anything about this mill? The mill, uh, I gave that to Olivia, my sister. You gave it to your sister, this yeah. that piece of land? Yes. Okay. And then when she died, she leave, she left it to Laurit. Okay. And he sold that five acres to John Brady. Okay, but that mill, that was a... a Fan mill or animal? No, mill? that was a wind mill. That's sugar a wind cane. Mill. Sugar cane, yeah. Yeah, but it was pushed by wind. By wind, yeah. Not by animals. Not by animals. Okay. And do you know if the um, if the mechanisms uh, were... Uh, did you ever see the mechanisms of that? I mill? saw some of the, the... for the top of it. So it was still around in your yeah, days? Yeah. But it wasn't running. You, no, you, no, it wasn't running. So by the time you came along, that mill was Who, not... Uh, there was a man by the name of Franklin and Mildred Williams. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember Miller. She's dead now. Uh, uh, D David Sibyl. Mm -hmm. He told me he uh, used to uh, put, take bring cane to this windmill. You know, okay. you know, the whole place was in sugar cane. This, all this area was planted in cane? The whole island. Mm -hmm. And you remember that though? No, I don't remember. I, yeah, with the Virgin Land Company. With VI Company, but, yeah. but by the time you came along, you're saying that it was not the whole no, island? No, win, the, no windmill was running it. Right, in the, right. In those okay. days. Yeah. okay, so this mill, you know it was a windmill and you saw some of the mechanism. Some of the mechanism. But you didn't It really was tree, tree roller, mm -hmm. had tree roller. Uh, like, the, like one roller here, one roller here, and another one in the middle. And they used to have the cane piled up. And so you had these wheels that used to squeeze the cane? Yeah. And it, then the juice used to run out? Yeah, and it was a, a, the, 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 the ro a, ro a roller, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And they used to have mill uh, uh, cane piled up for about, uh, about three, four days sometime, mm -hmm. waiting on wind. Okay. And whenever, whenever, whatever time the, the wind start to blow, the managers or the overseers would wake you up and. Oh, so even if the wind wasn't blowing in the daytime, and uh, then the wind started blowing in the night. In the night. They would wake up the walkers and make them come and load the cane. Whatever into the mill. time in the night that wind start to blow, mm -hmm. the overseer would come down or the driver uh -huh. and wake up everybody, woman and and woman, everybody. Woman, man, and children. Got uh, to, to, feed, to, to feed the mill. To feed the mill, yeah. Okay. And I noticed up there, and uh, by that mill, you have some other buildings and stuff there, so... That was uh, right right here. Mm -hmm. That was a Frank P. Jorgensen. That, that was the owner of the house, of the owner of the estate. Oh, okay, he so was that was a house there. He was a dean. Okay. You know? it's, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. And so... When you got past that age where the uh, the sugar mills uh, were running, like the ones up here, and when you were still yeah, young... Yeah, when, when I was going... When that, that one was wasn't running, right? None of them was working. But then they started Bethlehem Factory. Bethlehem Factory was started by Latchman. Mm -hmm. Latchman. And that was in the 30s? Or? No, man. Uh, Bethlehem was grinding before the 30s. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was in the Danish, Danish time, right. before the transfer. Right. And then it was run by windmill, but the sugar factory mm -hmm. uh, was under the American town. Okay. See Low Love, Low Love place there? That was the uh, first steam mill. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That was the first steam the first, driven mill? Yeah, steam driven. Okay. 
Yeah. And that's the one right there by Bethlehem too, right? That's right. Yeah. And that tall chimney you see there? That was was graining in the Danish time. That was the old, that's old? Yes. Okay. The use of wind-powered mills on the island ended around the 1830s. The Bethlehem Sugar Factory is said to have upgraded to steam power in 1826. As for the chimney that still stands at the site, it is not the original chimney. It dates back to 1905 when it, along with the central factory, was constructed to replace the old masonry factory and chimney that was torn down in 1904 by the owner and president of the West India Company, Jacob Latchman. You told me one time that you worked for, for uh, more wind uh, in the power plant. Yes, yeah? a across from uh, First Bank. In Frederickstead Town? In Frederickstead Town. I worked under Mr. Jensen. You worked under Mr. Jensen running Frederickstead Power Plant? Yes. There was three motors, three uh, motors, one of the old motors and the new motors. They used to start by air. They had air tanks. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, pressure right German, there and they used that to push the German, to uh, Yeah, there were German mo motors, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I used to get a dollar a night. Setting, a dollar per night? Yeah. Setting two o'clock in the day mm -hmm. and break up. 12 at night. Like, okay, what happened at 12 midnight? What, what did you say? They took, they, they leave, leave the switch on, but uh, uh, the, the light would finally, tongue would go in darkness. Okay, so when you left at 12 midnight, mm -hmm. you shut off the motors? Yes. But you still had batteries? Yeah, they had, it was battery, they used to charge about you know, three shells of battery, I don't know how much. Right, but you, the, the, way, the, the way the power plant worked then, it had batteries. Yeah, they charged the batteries. And so the motors were run, charged the batteries from, what time they started the motors? In Two o'clock in the, in the, in the afternoon. You didn't run the motors in the daytime? No. Or early in the morning? No, no. Okay. And, unless it was necessary. Right, okay. But it's, uh, three shelves of batteries right. were there. Uh -huh. and there were batteries about that height and about that. Uh -huh. And all night and so, uh, until 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I would shut up. So at 12 o'clock you shut off the motors yeah. and leave the batteries Leave down. the batteries. And the batteries would power the place as long as they could. Yeah. And when the batteries died out, then you just have to wait until the next day. Wait until the next day. For the motors to yeah. start again and recharge the batteries again. Yeah. I worked for a dollar a night. And you got paid a dollar a night to do that? A dollar a night. Yeah. Do you, do you remember if that was before you went to the army or after you went to the army? That was before I went to the that army. Before the army, so that yeah. was all in, in yeah. the, before parties. You know how much they used to pay when they built Cricket Dam? Sixty cents a day. When they built Cricket Dam? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what they used to pay the people, sixty cents a day. Okay, so you had already started making a dollar a day. Yeah, I remember people walking for forty cents a day. Right. Now when you had that power plant in Frederickstead, do you know if they had a power plant like that in Christianstead too? I evidently, yes, they did because mm -hmm. there was a man by the name of Mr. Sula there. Okay. It was, the power plant was between he and old Marvin. Right. Marvin and Sula there. So they both, one had, Marvin had Frederick said? Yeah. And Sula Bear had Christian said? Yeah. Okay. And they ran these power plants up, they, they charged batteries. Yes. Which is interesting because I believe we're going to end up going back to that system. But it was three shelf. Uh, and you used to have to put acid in the batteries? Yes, acid. Okay. I remember when, when the, the full, get, get into full charge, mm -hmm. uh, they were open, they uh, open on the top and the whole place smoking. Wow. It burn your eye and all that kind so of thing. So that was not a very safe and job. <laughs> I remember the, the scent of the acid. The acid the, used to actually be hot and the hot, top was open. Yeah. In the night coming, uh, half past 11, so you, the acid in the battery would be boiling, mm. uh, foam. And, and, and giving off a gas. Yes. And so that's about the time when you <laughs> just about ready to shut it down. Yes. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, before we before we move out from from this location, because we want to just take a walk up the hill, but uh -huh. um, tell me a little bit about crime and punishment back in those days. Well, I would say I wish it was like those days. No. No. Okay. First of all, a poor, po a black person mm -hmm. couldn't have a gun. Okay. Uh, the only way a, a poor person like the Heiligers, mm -hmm. my father used to sign a paper. Uh, a so you could have a gun. 
Because your father was, was had a gun, yeah. yeah. But nobody, and there wasn't privacy. Mm -hmm. If you tell a police that 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 boy had a gun or that, that man, they come out, uh, kick your door down and turn everything. And search for the gun. Yeah, this is not about rights and all. It wasn't right, around. Right, right. Some people had guns. I know my grandfather had a gun. And, uh, well, if he, if he had a gun, somebody, maybe the Flemings mm -hmm. must have signed for he to have a gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you couldn't have a gun mm -hmm. or a, carry a knife to school or anything. Okay. They beat the hell out of you. And all the bad... They beat you? All, all the bad boys. Mm -hmm. We didn't have bad boys that went down in the same fort there mm -hmm. and get one beating. So they were beating people in the fort? Beat the hell out of you. So well, you were already I, a grown man and they were still beating people no, in the fort? No, I was going to school. You were still in school? Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember right there where the library wa was, mm -hmm. they'd take you down in there and hold you around a tree and beat the hell out of you. Hmm. And I tell you, one one time there was a group in the, uh, in the, in the fort there. The, the little window them... Yeah, I remember the windows. That, that, what they call the black hole? Yes. Yeah. Well, that, when they shot you up in there, you could have sh scraped uh, uh, water off of the wall, you know. Oh, it was that damp in there? Yeah. Wow. You, they shut you down in there. Mm -hmm. And they were, I, I tell you the truth, I admire with some, with some of that. Yeah, because it, it kept out in the place. Out in the place, you couldn't, if you appear going there and something stick out, mm -hmm. uh, sticking out in your pack, like how yours, well, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, and police come and pat you down. You Just like that, no, no need to, that's to right. any warrant or Yeah, and you couldn't turn back at the police, no shooting police. Mm -hmm. I can't help, I, ag I agree with, with those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I have never gotten, we couldn't get in trouble because my father was so strict. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And all the old deans and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the stupidness about these gun shooting and no police, no pol you, you couldn't, you couldn't have a gun much less to pull up a mm -hmm. gun mm -hmm. out. To, to shoot the police, mm -hmm. otherwise nothing like that. Mm -hmm. You turn back at the police, he bust your head wide open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us here today. I certainly this is appreciate something that, that. Uh, and I'm sure that the that the young people are going to really enjoy hearing this this conversation. Well, they're not uh, going to enjoy to, uh, hearing that I agree to bust the behind. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, you turn back at a teacher in my days. No, you couldn't do that. No, no. even in my days you couldn't do that. No, no. But uh, in those days, uh, there was some corporal punishment, do you call it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember the when they used to clean the uh, pit them in town, the toilet pit. The toilet pit? Yeah. Where? In town. Who used to clean them? Uh, the man... You mean the pits at, at all the houses, the, 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 out, the, uh, the outhouses? Yes, they had the out, outhouses and this man, they had a, a mule cat. Uh-huh. Used to, and he would, they rip up the toilet floor mm -hmm. and uh, he got down in there with a shovel and a bucket and a full cat. This was a big cat. Right. This is right up, right down by fish market. So you take off the whole seat off of the old house? The whole, whole, the whole seat, the, the bench? Yeah. The, and leave the floor open. And leave the floor open and then somebody would actually go down in the pit? Go down in the pit and dip out everything and full this new cat. When you pass from fish market, mm -hmm. uh, down Mali. Yes, by Mali. Uh, right, right there. Where it has been. Yeah, that's, the, what, the that's where they used to dump the that's stuff. That's where they dump the, the mule cat full of the stuff out of the Of the stuff, of the yeah. Pit. yeah. Then they had, they had closed up the toilet, them, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and get pan a, a panel with the, the, the I remember the old uh, garbage pan thing that they used yeah. to put under the pit. And uh, mm-hmm. put it in the truck and try it right, used to dump it right over there. You used to call that the night soil man, I remember. That's that. right. The, the man. man that used to drive the truck name was Frank. Frank oh, that's like he had a motor vehicle then? Yes. Yes, I remember yeah. that. But and I, I remember when the government passed a law uh-huh. that you had to have a flushing toilet yeah. in any house. Yeah. And that was when I was still very young. I remember your brother Lester. Yes, yeah. That, now Lester was older than you? Yeah, he was the oldest of us. You were the oldest? Yeah. He was older than he, Emil. He was one of the old men outside had a child with a different yeah, mother. You know, mm-hmm. My father was a nice, respectable man. Mm-hmm. But you couldn't get too near him if you was wearing a frock. If you were wearing a frock, you don't get him to close. He was mischievous. <laughs> I kind of understand that. I kind of yeah. kind of see some of that in you. <laughs> no, no, man, no. <laughs> you weren't like that? No, ghosts. <laughs> I am blamed for a lot of things. Uh-huh. And I, to, to God, I swear that it isn't the truth. <laughs> what, what, when I had this car, 133. That was the number? Yeah, 133. Uh-huh. I had a girlfriend. One. And she, one. And mm-hmm. she used to bring her girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And you know, we used to sell mango and sell everything. Uh-huh. So I was able to have some money in my pocket. Mm-hmm. So, but I, the, my girlfriend would bring her girlfriend, and then she bring her girlfriend. Mm-hmm. So I used to have this car full, full of girls, full of women, you mm-hmm. know. And they swear that I was going with all of these, but and it wasn't. And I hold up my hand to God because I'm a very respectable man. Okay. Uh, a lot of women used to be in love with me and stuff like that, and I, and I couldn't tell you how they look. Mm. Okay. But I am blamed up to now for having a heap of woman <laughs> to having this car. Because of that car, 133? Yeah, yeah, 133. Well, I guess I guess it was not common for to have a car back then. No, that's not right. Not too many people had a car. I bought that car to take my mother in mm-hmm. town to uh, take insulin for diabetes. Right. So yeah. uh, you being a man with a car yeah. would have had a lot of Yeah, advantage. I used to take up... Uh, yeah. see me in the Saturday afternoon with this car full of ladies. Full of, full of it was ladies. a two-seater. Yeah. And I swear I was go- going with all of these. Uh, and I yeah. pulled up my hand to God today. It, it wasn't isn't true. The, <laughs> but I just like... You, I still you have remember friends. were friends. That, that law book I have yes. and the cookbook and so was ordered by a very special lady. Mm. She used to read... Re- anything to read, mm-hmm. uh, she would read. Okay, she was a great, great person. Great, great. So you you had a you had an interesting life, and we're going to uh, we're going to stop now and, yeah. and move out uh, from here. But I I really appreciate this. Uh, yeah, man. I, yeah, I can tell you a lot about yeah, the, I know, I and know. old deans and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I'm blamed for certain things that you didn't do. Yeah, and the wickedness Otto and myself used to do up, up here. Some of it, I can't put it on the record. You can't put it on the record. (laughs) Yeah. For many of us, our knowledge of the island's historical events during the early 20th century are simply references to words and pictures in books and documents. But for John Tramberg, they are the memories and experiences acquired over a long and prosperous life. They are the moments he's witnessed and the events he's lived through. At a hundred years of age, John is one of the last remaining living links to the Danish West Indies. He was born under the Danish flag, lived through the transfer of the Danish West Indies to the United States, became of age during the Second World War, served his country, traveled the world, and returned home to raise a family and help develop his island home of St. Croix. He lived through all eight naval governors, 12 civilian governors and have seen all eight elected governors of the U.S. Virgin Islands. He survived nine siblings, a spouse, and two children. A hundred years of life, a hundred years of love, laughter, and sorrow. A hundred years of bearing witness 
to the ever-changing hand of time. He is a true Kujin son, a priceless timepiece, and the rarest and most precious of VI gems. Well, thank you, Johnny. And, and we're going to uh, uh, sign off now with Mr. John Tramborg and born April 17, 1916. 1916. Excellent. And I had a good time. And you've had a good time and you're still having a good time. Comrades of Post 133 of the Bromley Barclay Post in Frederick said, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank the good Lord for giving you 100 years of life. And I ask him that he grant you as many more as he will grant you. Cheers to Comrade Trumbo. I had a wonderful time. We've never known once. We always had some money, some fruits to sell, and, but everything is all right. And I, I have my little grandchildren and the mother and, grand, and grandmother here. They are my pleasure. I have my, my ne two nephews here. So one more thing I have. I think it, it, is an act, it was an act of God. All of, all of Happy birthday.